We're bringing in former FBI special agent and News Nation contributor Jennifer Koffendoffer now. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Natasha. And certainly we can understand this family's pain. Um, I, I do want to ask you about the night that Dane disappeared. He had called 911 <laughs> twice, but when police arrived, he wasn't anywhere to be found. Is this common in cases like this? You know, it is common. And I'll tell you what, this is not that rare. Uh, working uh, the complaint desk, actually, as an FBI agent, we had individuals come in so often that really had broken with reality and felt either the U.S. government or other governments were after them. And it's very real to them. And when this happens, they leave everything behind. They don't want to be tracked. They don't want to be traced. So that action seemed very normal in this type of a situation. I see. And is that tracking really what, what's behind the wallet, the phone, the laptop, everything that was left in the car? Absolutely. They want to completely escape ever being found. They want to go someplace they feel safe. I know in two cases, one person ended up in Australia, another in Iran uh, that had this same fear of one, the U.S. government, and the other one was the Chinese government. So these things do happen. They sometimes will go to libraries and use computers there just to keep in touch with what is going on uh, with the governments that they're concerned about chasing them. They will use aliases, never their own name. And typically an alias they choose will be either of a sibling or someone they loved or respected. Yeah, if a loved one or a family member does have mental health issues and doesn't want to be in contact, does not want to be found, can they be compelled to rejoin society and their family? They can. Uh, there is no law, but there are things uh, that different individual families that are dealing with this can do. You can see this mother is doing a great job using social media. I'm so glad to see mainstream media get involved as well. And sadly, the police will only frighten and scare them. So the best hope is that they will contact their family, typically via letter, they're afraid of cell phones, they're afraid of computers, but they may contact via letter. If Dane is okay and well and living off the grid, and let's say through crowdsourcing he is found, what if he still doesn't want to be living on the grid and he doesn't want contact with his family? Well, how I've seen these cases resolve, and in both instances they did, is medication. Uh, getting them to trust to go to a doctor and being medicated for their condition, and they can completely come back into society and be the wonderful person that doesn't suffer from paranoia again. All right, Jennifer Koffendoffer, always appreciate the context. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.